So photogrammetry is a hot topic in dentistry right now. And the idea or the concept of photogrammetry is the ability to scan in an environment with some very special fiduciary markers on top of your implants in an environment that normally you wouldn't be able to scan. So previously we weren't able to scan with our regular intraoral scanners. And so this opens up the opportunity to do some real-time dentistry that wasn't available before. So let me explain. Say you're doing an all on X and you go ahead and flap the tissue, you place your implants and you close up and you'd like to take a scan at that moment. Well, because the tissue is somewhat mobile and bleeding likely, it would be very difficult with the historic data sets using an intraoral scanner, a regular iOS scanner, like a three shape or an Atero to scan that tissue accurately. So the, most of the literature in the paper, most of the literature in, in, in the literature base will say, in fact, you can't, that you just simply can't do it and it won't turn out well. So photogrammetry is a workaround for that. It allows us to place some special fiduciary markers on our implants and it allows us to use a special camera to take a picture of the mouth and register a digital impression of the implants, which is great because then you can take it into some CAD CAD software design your teeth, hit print on the printer, and in a matter of an hour later or so, or if you have the new Sprint Ray printer, maybe even in 23 minutes, print out a brand new set of teeth. Take the teeth to the mouth and put it in the mouth of the patient. So for people that are doing uh, dentistry where they don't want to build the provisional until after they can place the implants, this is a workflow that works very well. So I don't use photogrammetry. And people say, well, why don't you? Well, the first reason is, is that I actually have my teeth fabricated before the surgery, mostly because I'm lazy and I like for things to be very smooth and easy. So what I do is I use a guided approach. I place the implants through a guide, which means I know where they're going before I start. If I know where the implants are going before I start, it allows me to build the teeth before I start. So the teeth of the patient that they're leaving with that day, the temporary provisionals, are already built. And then what we do is we just put them on top of the implants, okay? So that is very efficient. We can do an arch in about one hour, as you can see on this video right here. You can go and watch this unedited video, narrated. You can watch it for an hour and you can see for yourself how we do it. But we do it routinely one hour per arch, okay? Now, in addition to that, I've been able to scan in the mouth in a bloody field with tissue that's flapped, not sutured, repetitively with intraoral scanners and have a passive fitting prosthesis. Now, right now, somebody out there is having a heart attack because they're saying, you can't do that. They're, you're saying the literature says you can't do that. Well, I know what the literature says. I know what the literature says, but I'm doing it. And it's working and it's not, not working once, but it's working repetitively. So I was a little curious about that. And last summer, I think I stumbled on the answer to why it's working. I was at the Koi Center for the Koi Symposium that summer. And Marta was the digital expert on the stage. And she was talking about scanning accuracies. And she was reporting results just like we have already discussed. Photogrammetry is good for this. It's difficult to do iOS this way. And then she went on to, to cover two lesser important papers that really resonated with me. And here's what the first one said. The first one said, if your implants are more parallel to each other, the scanners do a better job. They're more accurate. And I was shocked. I, I said, am I, am I reading this right? So if the implants are in the mouth and that the scan bodies are, are more parallel to each other, that the scanner does a better job. And, and, and the answer is, yeah. And I was just shocked. I said, why would the, as an engineer, why would the parallel, you know, why would the scan bodies being parallel have anything to do with the accuracy of a digital scan? It shouldn't matter, but apparently it does. So that's the first thing. The second thing she said, which is, is completely obvious to anyone is that if your scan bodies are closer together, you get a better scan. You get a more accurate scan. So let's go to the literature. Historically, we do an all on four. 
we want to increase our AP spread. So we've got uh, our implants are spread apart as far as possible. So the posterior implants are 35 millimeters away from the anterior implants. Well, what that means is you're not, a, you're not accomplishing that second report I just said. The implants are so far apart that a traditional iOS scan body is going to be so far away from the second scan body that they're not in the same frame. They're not in the same frame. Now, in my practice, I can count probably on less than one hand the number of times I've done an all on four. We just don't do all on fours. I am the smile engineer. I over engineer just about everything I do. So if I think someone could get by with four, they get five. If I think somebody could get by with five implants, they get six. It's called over engineering. Okay. It's a sound practice that we do in engineering. So I don't do all on fours. So that means that my implants, number one, are closer together. Now, bring in the first paper that I mentioned. It says if your implants are more parallel, you get a better scan with iOS. Well, my implants are placed with a type four surgical guide, which is a fully guided system, which means the implants are going through the guide and they go into the right position within about 200 microns of, of positional error which means my scan bodies are all parallel. They're all within a couple hundred microns of where the plan was. They have to be in order for the prost to fit on top and the prost fits every time. So I have implants that are close together and they are parallel and I do iOS scanning in real time in bloody environments before suturing and I get great results. And people are shocked. They go, the literature doesn't say you can do that. But the literature is only as good as the science that went into it. So if you look at the literature and they're comparing all on four free-handed, going back in time, we're doing freehand all on four, those freehand implants are not parallel. They're not. They're not. They're just not going to be parallel. The free-handed implants are not going to be parallel. They're going to be something, okay? And they're not going to be close together. So when you have implants that are far apart and they're not parallel, photogrammetry is going to be your solution. You're not going to be able to do that with an iOS. So if you want to save the money on photogrammetry, what you would do is you would go guided, place your implants parallel, and get a few more in there. And after all, by adding a few more implants, the factor of safety, because of that factor of safety, the risk factors to you and the patients go way down, which means that you're giving them a better solution that could like, likely last the rest of their life but properly done. So that's why... I don't need photogrammetry in my practice and I probably will never invest in it unless somebody gives me one and they just want me to test it for fun. And even then, it'll probably slow me down. This has been another episode of Implants Made Simple. I'm Dr. Robert Stanley, the Smile Engineer, helping you re-engineer your practice every day.